all-new Yamaha V6 Offshore F-350. It's a featherweight knockout, the lightest 350 horsepower outboard on the water, exhilarating boating and incredible control in a powerfully light design. The Yamaha V6 Offshore F-350. Tune into this week's weekly video fishing forecast for more on the July issue of the Fisherman Magazine. We have the highlights from that Good Sam tournament last week. Jenny has another open boat piece on the perfect summertime beach combo. And we highlight the Fisherman's Project Boat. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today we come to you from Dick's Bait and Tackle in Mastic Beach, right on Neighborhood Road. If you're on the way to the beach down Smith Point, there's really good fishing down there between the fluke, striped bass, bluefish. Gotta stop here, it's a great place to stop. Get your all your tackle, your bait, rods, reels. You get your rods repaired. He does rod building as well. He's a very fine selection. All you need to fish the Smith Point stretch of beach. Come on down, say hi to Rich, check it out. For nearly 90 years, the Viking fleet from Montauk has been putting anglers on the fish. Whether you jump on a half day trip, fish the deep for an overnight adventure targeting big game, a day trip to block, or a sunset cruise. Their experienced captains and crew have you covered. Vikingfleet.com Today's June 27, 2024. And here's the fishing news. We start off with a report from Babylon Village Dock with Tim C. Smith, who has the results from the third annual South Shore Fishing Tournament. Tim. Yeah, Matt, the third annual Reeling for a Cause tournament started off last Thursday at the Long Island Yacht Club in Babylon with a summer kickoff party and captain's meeting. Live music, great food, and raffles. This was a great start to a successful competition. Then Saturday, the action moved to the Babylon docks. Many of Long Island's top fishing boats were once again represented at this year's tournament. We're here today at the Babylon Village docks for the third annual uh, fishing tournament to benefit Good Samaritan University Hospital. And this year we're raising money for our Fund for Nursing Education and Leadership. So we've been so grateful to have the support of so many of our marinas and boat dealerships here in the South Shore of Long Island, including our event partners who have been with us for the past three years and are really leading this effort. Then you and Mike Caruso, publisher of the Fisherman Magazine, presided over the weigh-in. First place fluke went to Ryan Federico of West Islip with his 7.7 .7 pounder. First place bluefish was landed by Charlie Margarita and his dad of Babylon with a 10.25 chopper. Then the top tuna went to Logan Hank of Sayville at 38 pounds. What brings me here today is that I get to spend a full day on the Great South Bay with my son fishing for a cause, namely for the Nursing Education Fund uh, for Good Samaritan University Hospital. This is a fund that provides um, educational opportunities for nursing and for them to progress in their career. Uh, so it's a great, great cause for a great, great uh, organization. Great event for a wonderful cause. From the Babylon Docks, I'm Tim C. Smith. Matt, back to you. Jeff Strong from Strong's Marina in Mattatuck, New York, is testifying before a congressional subcommittee on Thursday in D.C. As you may be aware, NOAA is trying to put a speed restriction on boats over 36 feet to 10 knots. We will monitor the hearing and pass along any updates that we hear. We have another open boat piece this week. The fisherman's Jenny Ackerman. She covers the perfect beach fishing combo for the summer months. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's open boat. Today, I'm out here fishing the beach. I figured I'd give you a little rundown on the perfect beach summertime combo. So what I have right here, I have my koi fish rod. I built it, I love this thing. It's a 791. Perfect size rod, 791 up to eight foot. That's my perfect range for when I'm fishing off the beach. Now, pairing your reel with that eight foot rod, I like to do a 3000 size reel. Like I have a 3000 size Stratic on here. Another fan favorite of mine is the Pen Battle DX. Pens are excellent reels. So are Stratics, Daiwa BG, BGMQ 3000, whatever floats your boat. Everyone has a personal preference. 
but that's just the perfect combo. It's nice and light, it's comfortable. Like I'm walking the beach till sundown, trying to scrape up a fluke or a cocktail blue. So you wanna be comfortable with a nicely balanced rod. I'll catch you guys on next week's open boat, if I catch a fish. The latest issue of the Fisherman Magazine, that's the July glossy issue, is out now. It's been out. We have Stripe Request, and you can check out this piece by clicking on the card in the upper left. Then we have Poppin' for Yelp, and that bite is just getting going. These fish are just starting to show up. The water is warming up. Get on this one. Check this one out if you're looking to pop for Yelpin this summer. Also, we have Solo Fluking. We all like to fish with somebody, but sometimes we like to fish alone, and it's good to know how to go fluking by yourself. Take a look at this read if you do plan to fluke by yourself in the future. This is the Steigercraft 255 Miami. This classic hardcore fishing machine with down east lines has a new trick up its sleeve. Check out this latest video on our YouTube channel as publisher Mike Caruso and Al Steiger reveal how the latest boating and fishing technology have been incorporated in the true and tried Steigercraft 255 Miami. Click on the card in the top right or look in the video description for the link. Next we have Tim C. Smith with the Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash updates. And now the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge entries for the week. We had four entries in the fluke category. First we have Long Island subscriber Brian Polsonelli with his entry at 11.68 pounds. Then we have another Long Island subscriber, Mark Zaluski, with his fluke weighing in at 8.1 pounds. Our third entry comes in from New England subscriber, Mike A. Briggs, scaling in at 12.47 pounds. And the fourth entry is Michael Blonsky with his fluke coming in at 9.8 pounds. The Sea Robin category had one entry, and that was from New England subscriber, Fernando Ledge, taking the ninth spot, weighing in at 2.18 pounds. So the standing looks like this. Anthony Savino is still at 19 points, Christopher Jones at 12, and Frank Shea at 10. Just a reminder, for your chance to win the grand prize Steigercraft powered by Yamaha and other great prizes, you need to be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine and use a 2024 entry form filled out completely, available at thefisherman.com slash contests. We had two entries in the Coastal Kayak Clash this week. Gary Innes of New England entered a 25.25 inch fluke. Then Bob Wagner of New Jersey entered a 31 inch fluke, besting his 27 inch entry. Now Bob Wagner and Justin Oser are still stuck in a virtual tie at the top with nine points apiece, but because Bob Wagner has bigger fish on the board, he holds the top position. Mike Radazuwinski is in third place, sitting well in striking distance with six points. For all the details on how to enter, visit thefisherman.com slash contests. Now let's take a look at our upcoming events on the calendar. We have the Surf Rats Bowl tournament that's still going on right now through July 5th. Still time to get in that big fish for the end of the tournament. Then on June 30th, this is the cancellation date. It was originally on the 23rd, but now it's June 30th is the All Pro Flu Fishing Duke of Fluke Tournament and Fair. For more information, check out their Facebook page. Then on July 11th is the Town of Iceland Public Freshwater Clinic. And on July 13th is the Hampton Bays Fluke Tournament. For all the details, go to thefisherman.com slash events. Now let's go to the map and I'll let you know what I've been hearing. Bill, he fished on Saturday the 22nd. He went out with his son Will and his wife Bridget. They were in the western south shore back bays. They had four nice keeper fluke up to 22 inches. Bill said he was outfished by his wife who had two of the keepers. So a lot of shorts as well to keep him busy is what he also added. Then there was this nice doormat. It was caught, caught by Stephen Crumwich. He was in the western south shore bays as well. Carrie Killen, she caught a nice 24 inch, 5.5 pound fluke in Shinnecock Bay. And that was with the help of their golden captain, Morgan. What a cute dog. 
Alan Yee, he fished on the ebb tide out of Montauk over the weekend. He had these, this nice striped bass. It was an overslot that was released right after the picture. Uh, he said they used eels on the night trip. It was a full moon night trip, and he said the bite was non-stop. Also, Joey Pollock of Woodmere, he sent me in this monster carp that he caught from a local lake in his area. Nice job, Joey. If you do have a notable catch, email me at mbroderick at thefisherman.com. I'll try and get into weekly video fishing forecast or the magazine. Our meteorologist, Rich Von Olin, his fishing and weather report is brought to you by Premium Bucktails. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. We'll check that weekend forecast. You can always check your favorite apps, weather tools, weather sites, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend. So I uh, didn't get much fishing in the last week. I had some uh, health issues, which I've been addressing, and uh, you know, I think I'll be okay. I'll be back at it shortly, back out in the water to give you some updates and some photos. But uh, I've heard the fluke is still good in Reynolds Channel, back bays, and uh, also in the ocean is starting to get some reports of some decent fluke in the reefs and wrecks offshore, so that's pretty good. Water temps, uh, look at this, weird variety here. You got that little pot of colder water, 60 degrees in the New York Bight, the mud hole there around the Ambrose buoy, and uh, you know some warmer air, warmer water actually surrounding it, so maybe seeing a little bit of upwelling, uh, the changes in the winds. We've had a lot of back and forth weather, so perhaps, you know, adding to the, uh, the changes we've seen. Now, Friday's good. You got uh, you know a decent northeast going southeast breeze, but it should diminish as the day goes on. Saturday starts out southeast about five to fifteen, and then you know some twenties in the afternoon. So early morning Saturday is better. There's a front over us on Sunday. You know, never the best thing there. There'll be some rain. The winds may drop out a bit Sunday afternoon, but the ocean will still be kind of rolled up a bit from Saturday night's wind. So uh, yeah, southeast five to fifteen, gust to twenty twenty five in the afternoon Saturday. Early morning, your best bet. Party boats okay. Uh, you know. The sound is okay. Uh, Peconic Bay is okay. Great South Bay should be all right. Sunday, though, we got a little bit of rain and some of the southwest breeze will be diminishing in the afternoon, but not an ideal weekend. Check those apps as we get closer. It's going to be one of those deals where uh, the closer you get, a little more, uh, you know, kind of fine tune as to what the uh, the weather is doing in any given hour. So that'll help you out a little bit. Waves uh, 2 to 448 on Saturday, and they kind of come up a bit on Sunday. That may be more of a roll to the western side. We'll see again how fast that front gets through. Got 70s on Saturday. It's not too hot. And, you know, not too bad on Sunday. It's 70s and you're 80. One of my go-to apps, the Wind Guru. Again, we'll start to see some changes here, I think, as we get closer to the, the weekend with the front. But Friday's been consistently good, northeast going southeast in the afternoon. A cool day, too. And then Saturday, southeast breeze, you know, starts to kick up in the afternoon. You see some of those reds and oranges with the gust picking up there. And that'll mean a roll on the ocean for Sunday and more of a southwest breeze, a little bit of rain showers in there. So if I had to pick, you know, Friday, we'll give it the green light. It uh, looks good. Northeast, southeast, 5 to 15. Not too bad. A little cool day, too. Saturday at southeast, 5, gusting to 25 after about 2 or 3 p.m., and that's the chance of a shower in the evening. And Sunday, you know, front's coming through southwest, 10 to 20. The ocean will be uh, kind of rolled up a bit, and then, you know, the shower should end. And maybe the afternoon gets a little bit better. So a tricky weekend forecast. Check those apps as we get closer. If you do get out, uh, have a great time. Be safe as always, and catch them up. Matt, back to you. From Sag Harbor, we have Will and Andy. Thanks, Matt. So reported this week out of Sag Harbor. Um, you know, it's that time of year, guys. It's starting to get hot. The fish are pushing a little bit out further east and also out into the ocean. Um, the porgy bite's still been strong in the bay, but um, apart from that, and some sea bass as well, Apart from that, most of the other stuff moving out, but that bite has been good. The stripers have been great out there. Um, bluefish as well, and um, really anything as well as fluke. Uh, so hopefully that bite remains. It continues strong, guys, and uh, we're really looking forward to this season and all the great things to come. So back to you, Matt. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. This wind's kind of put a dent in a lot of fishing plans. Uh, you know, since before this past weekend. So we'll see what happens going in. It looks like it's going to kind of lay down a little bit. So hopefully get out there. I know a buddy had gotten out earlier in the week, looked around, did not find any bunker. Um, you know, later last week before it started to blow, they've been out. We covered a lot of ground. Uh, saw some bunker worked at least a dozen pods in between Shinnecock and Mariches and a uh, little east of Shinnecock and a little west of Mariches. Didn't come up with any bass. So 
I know that uh, Montauk has had some good fish, so it seems like that body of fish that was around here has moved east, and hopefully we'll get another wave of fish from the west, but to keep us busy in the meantime, hopefully once uh, conditions allow, tuna bite seems to be on. When there's been windows, um, not even that far out, 15 to 20 miles, some people have gone out further, uh, big eye, um, yellow fin, blue fin. So hopefully that's going to, you know, get going again. We'd really love to get out there and do some jig and pop. Um, some of the smaller blue fin or yellow fin, whatever wants to bite, I'm happy with. Uh, the fluke bite in the bay in the shallow waters, shore based has been kind of a good option, even though it is a hassle and lots of wind knots, um, you know, with the, with the wind that's been going on. But that fluke bite will continue to um, get going. And with the weather and it being kind of tough, I have to think that a good number of the, the typical sea bass haunts um, should be chock full when, when this wind lays down and people are able to get out there since beginning uh, opening day was um, pretty sporty. Not a lot of people were, you know, fished out those spots. So uh, a lot of good stuff going forward. So get excited, get out there, catch some fish. Let us know how you do. Back to you, Matt. Went well, on over to Hawaiian Dan. He knows him like the back of his hand. It's been a very windy and rough week and Sam was still able to put us both on bass and fluke in less than 60 seconds of the lines hitting the water, scoring one for the table and two oversized safely released. If you want to keep up with Sam and his latest post, follow lisalt.fishing on Instagram. Now we still have tons of life around and it keeps getting better each week. Grass shrimp, cinder worms, tiny sand eels, rain bait in the half inch through three inch sizes, birds, porgies, flukes, striped bass, and hopefully I can get out there and score some black sea bass this week. The Duke of Fluke tournament is this Sunday, June 30th, so you, it's your last chance to sign up. For more information, visit allpronational.com. Now let's get off those couches, grab some friends, make some memories, and get out there and fish. Remember to make someone smile today and every day, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Hawaiian Dan or talkfishtv.com, and I'll do my best to help. Until next week, stay safe out there. Continue to look out one another and keep spreading that aloha now back to you matt from northport we have the cow harbor baits and tackle report hey folks it's great to be back with you again this weekend uh fishing's tough uh with this heat sometimes just getting out and maintaining against the wind these heavy northwest winds uh full moon was fishing was like i'd have to say it was like 50 50 depending on where you were located at uh, the boats, again, are still doing phenomenal on the striped bass and uh, knocking out keeper fluke, although you've got to start now that there's been pressure out there weeding out through fluke. So you're going to fish for a bit to get some keepers, and that's fine. There's a lot of action out there. Still, the porgies are starting to show up quite a bit. Uh, sea bass season opened up, and people having uh, issues like trying to find sea bass in the legal size there's wrecks around here something strange is going on some of the fish that we normally would catch we don't see them in an abundance and i'm talking about like porgy sea bass and um sea robins as a bycatch i really think a lot of these bass they're just like eating so many fish we're going to find out lobster season's opening up so we talked to some of those guys out there that are uh lobstering in the sound um let's see what happens that's going to be a big uh indicator to me on whether or not the bass are like really foraging many of our smaller fish out there uh the temperatures are coming up we're looking at around 71 degrees and um out the sound which means inside the bay in some of these areas are getting hot notice the heavy brown tide after this week those northwest winds are pushing a lot of debris to the back of the harbors uh creating like um water issues i would have to say so if you're out there be careful and check your DEC to see if you're allowed to clam because some areas I would imagine are going to get shut down. And that's important to know because you want to stay healthy. Also, um, a lot of things going on. We've got events happening. You always want to touch the base with the shop and, and see what's happening because we're coming into uh, 4th of July. And we've got plenty of stock at the shops. It's tough out there. It's uh, definitely a slower season when you talk to a lot of tackle shop owners. So, um, Please support your local shops as long as they're really decent people and they treat you right, treat them right back too. Anyway, um, I just want to thank everybody again and I bid you all peace and tight lines. From Huntington, Captain Gage. Thanks, Matt. What's up, everybody? Captain Cage here reporting to you from Huntington Harbor, where I fish seven days a week for sandcitycharter.com. Check out the website. Anyway, 
We've been on the fish since April. It's been non-stop. They've been chewing. We've been getting them on every trip. We've been blessed, no doubt about it. But we've been able to find them. We've been able to catch them. And it's been a ton of fun, guys. Great season. This last week, Eric Hernandez, who owns a 380 Boston Whaler Outrage, hires me a couple times throughout the season to take family and friends out for a fun day so he can enjoy his boat or to take business associates out, like in this case, uh, to put them on some fish and then take them for lunch. So we shot across from Huntington to Stanford Yacht Club, picked up a couple of guests over there, and uh, shout out to the fishing grounds, managed to have a great time, we brought some bass over the boat, guys are having laughs, enjoying themselves, having a great time, then we went over to Prime for lunch, so it turned out to be a great afternoon, thank you so much Eric, very grateful, and uh, appreciate the good times on the 380 Outrage, though why not, love that boat. Then on Sunday, Frank brought his three sons out on Sand City Charter, we shot out to the sound, and uh, it was a little choppy out there because of the wind, but we managed to get on them they were chewing and uh, the twins managed to pull two overs over here that you're gonna see them release uh, one of the sons got a keeper so we managed to go home with some fillets and it turned out to be a great weekend and uh, if you guys want to get out there get on the bass let us know we'll be happy to we're gonna go out tonight we're gonna go sit on the chunk and uh, see how that starts out the season here for us first time going out chunking tonight and next week I will let you know in some of the videos here I'm gonna show you uh, how I throw my cast net and how I catch the bait in the area here uh, to use live bait when we do go chunking so stay tuned for that wishing everybody bent rods tight lines and I'll see you out on the water back to you Matt from the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Matt, Fire Island report. Uh, typical summer doldrum type of fishing now. Uh, fluke, a couple of weak fish. Uh, sea bass is open, so the reef, you might catch fluke or sea bass out there on the Fire Island reef or the Hempstead reef. And uh, inshore, it's uh, pick a weak fish. Uh, Ocean Beach area typically is best right now. Uh, flu kind of scattered everywhere. There's no one area that's a hot bite, but you got to search around. I try to go to areas where nobody fishes, and it doesn't have to be deep water. I'm catching fish in six, seven feet of water uh, where basically the other boats don't go. So you got to be a little adventurous and search around. So anyway, Matt, the fishing is decent. Weather looks like it's going to be pretty good. So that's it for this week. I'll be in touch with you next week. From Jones Beach Bait and Tackle and Captree Bait Tackle and Fuel, Brendan Rutigliano. Ah, oh, damn it. Anyway, just wanted to give you guys a nice little report for the Fisherman Magazine. Uh, there's Fluke on the pier. This is outgoing. Honestly, incoming's been a little bit better. I just got bit off. I'm very upset about it. But uh, gulp bucktails or spearing and squid has been working even uh, little kids have been catching so just get out there fish uh, other areas are really channel and inlet there's uh, some weak fish around there's some blues and bass and uh, just get out there and fish and you'll catch something back to you with our fly freshwater and maybe some saltwater reports Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters hello Matt well so this is I'm on the Delaware right now it is today, it's 85 degrees. Yesterday, it was 60 degrees. Go figure. We had a great time, windy, but I had uh, Richard on my boat yesterday and he's caught his biggest Delaware trout. Uh, it was fabulous. He had three trout, he was happy. He said it was the best thing he ever had on the Delaware. And, you know, fishing with, out of a, a, you know, I'm using right here a striker. Uh, the Stealth Pros are really good, the Outcast. Um, which, you know, it's just a way to really fish the Delaware, floated covered water. But anyway, it was a great time. I had over 10 people on this trip. It was a terrific trip. As far as the rest of the Catskills, forget it. It is so hot, the water's low. Don't fish for trout, you're gonna kill them. It's, it doesn't work well. Go to the west branch of the Delaware, stay at Trout Fitters, go to the Farmington, stay at Legends or Camp, and uh, fish the tailwaters. Saltwater, a lot of fish out there. Uh, as far as uh, uh, we had the stripers, but they're all mostly out east now. The big ones are. Still a lot of fish around, more like you're fishing in the, the late in the night. Some, a lot of bay blues around too. 
fluke on the flat are a lot of fun with a fly rod. So target them. And you know what? Sea robins are a lot of fun. So, you know, get out there where you can. You know, there's so many opportunities here on Long Island. If you, whatever type of fly fishing you want, we got it. So until what next week, tie lines, everybody. From the Western Sound, we have Nuno da Costa up in Rye from Tile or Tackle. Thanks, guys. Western end of the Sound, striped bass and bluefish are still dominating here. Live bait with Bunker is absolutely the king right now. But there are still great moments with the flutter spoons, the jigs, the poppers, and even trolling. The only difference is now it's more concentrated drifts. We're not doing these long, aimless drifts that we do in the spring when the fish are migrating and they're moving through. We're going to now locate them, use our fish finder, and we're going to do shorter drifts of where we're marking fish. Fluke fishing is okay, nothing crazy, but if you want to head up east, Huntington, Smithtown, you're going to have better chances with them. Porgy fishing has improved drastically from kind of nothing here on the west end, and guys are starting to catch them. Worms are king, whether you're sandworms or bloodworms, lugworms. Worms are king for the porgies right now. Offshore tuna fishing is still red, red hot. You know, if you want to, guys, the problem is the weather this week. A lot of wind, so we're going to see what happens after the blow. But tuna fishing with some yellow fin, blue fin, big guys being caught out there. Reports of some wahoo already, and I'm sure the mahi-mahi are going to come soon. Guys, get out there. We're halfway done with the season already, believe it or not. Our season starts in March, really, and goes to November. So we're at our midway point now. So get out there. Take advantage of the nice days when they are nice and get out there and catch them up. We have Rob Greco of the Long Island Outdoorsman in Rockville Center. Hello, fishermen readers. This is Robert Greco, Jr. from Long Island Outdoorsman giving you this week's fishing report. Uh, it's been a pretty solid week of fishing considering we've had wind. Um, as far as fluke fishing goes, my father, Robert Greco Sr., had fish up to 23 inches on 5-inch pink shine Berkeley Gulf mullets, uh, fishing the edges of the deep holes in Reynolds Channel. Um, Martin Wink was out with his boys. He had four keepers this week. Um, what else? Uh, my friend Andrew Vinci was out with his friend Matt, Matt Carlson fishing from the kayaks. They ended up with some weak fish and some fluke. So there's still weak fish around, which is nice to hear. As far as the stripers goes inside the bays, been pretty consistent with uh, you know small artificial lures such as bass assassins, sluggos, bucktails, poppers, you know, however you like to fish them, whether you're clam chum in the bridge, there's been plenty of fish around there. Um, as far as the big stripers on the ocean front, it's been a little tough to find bunker. If you can find bunker, you have a good chance of getting on some fish. Uh, it's just finding those bunkers, but excuse me, it's been a little tough. So um, and then the tuna bite. You know, again, with the ocean conditions being the way they are, a lot of guys haven't been able to get opportunities, so I don't have any tuna reports this week. Friday's looking like there's a weather window, so you know, you're looking at two to threes. If you're able to get out there, it's a good time to maybe try and get some tuna. Uh, for some bunker out, uh, you know, in, uh, in the ocean. So we do have that to look forward to. Thank you, guys. Back to you. Captain Mike Sentry's got the latest from Staten Island. Thanks, Tim and Matt. Hope all as well. Well guys, Mike Sancho here from Anglers of Legend Sport Fish, Boat Works and Seafoods. I know it's been a while, been MIA, but um, you know, everything's gravy, baby. You know what the saying goes. Been pretty busy with the boat works and uh, seafoods, of course. The charters, uh, you know, a little bit on the slow turn there because I can only be in one spot at one time. So uh, in between the uh, boat works and seafoods, I do manage to get out on a couple of charters here and there during the months and um it's been a horrible year for the offshore bite the winds from the south are picking up horrendously i'm talking 29 35 miles per hour we went out on thursday with a 387 miles round trip nautical mile round trip we hit the toms canyon coal wreck uh trolled and sight casted in between the toms canyon to the hudson we hit the uh, flats and the elbows of the hudson the texas tower the Triple Rex, Haskell, Little Italy. We hit the Humpty Dumpty, the farms, and back home, nothing. We did see a lot of surveying boats out there with the sonars and quite a few uh, big ships piling in what appears to be some windmill structure. That definitely screwed me up big time that day. Plus, it was a full moon. That's my excuse, by the way. On the home front, been beating up the striped bass, handing out for 30 minutes here and there, and literally 
bass or all, all the bass you want there Raritan Bay stick to the channels and the flats you will find them uh, you'll find them most likely on the uh, outgoing tides of the Raritan Bay uh, I like to use the uh, four ounce hoagie paddle tail and the two ounce flutter spoons diamondback pretty much shines a lot but successful a lot more with the hoagie four ounce paddle tail and that's in the uh, sand eel color uh, flukings picked up dramatically in the Raritan Bay those that know what the fluke are they know I'm telling you they're not in deep water some of these fluke you find some really nice one up to 26 inches and five feet of water so you don't have to go deep water believe it or not um, just be careful with your outboards trim them up always for obstructions you never know with that said let me get back here and um, that's all I got for this week so back to you if you'd like to be a part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we are looking for social media savvy anglers for hyper local reporting from the New York and metro area, and especially from the beach. So if you're a captain, tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact the producer at tcslabayrats at gmail.com. Do not forget this video is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Music. Search for the Fisherman Magazine podcast and subscribe so you can listen to this broadcast along with our other content. So there's some great fluke fishing starting to develop in the South Shore bays right now. A lot of keepers being caught, as evident by the South Shore fishing tournament and the reports that have been coming in. If you've been following along every week now, fish turn the tides to get that clean water, try some bigger baits, maybe it'll yield some bigger fish, and let's pray that the wind sits down. We'll see you next week.